Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for grace to be alive among the living. We glorify you for opportunity to hear your word. We thank you. Speak to us and grant us understanding in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Child of God is a privilege to be in God's presence once again. It is by his message that we are not consumed. And our prayer for you is that as you wait upon the Lord in the word of God, your life will receive strength in Jesus' name. Follow me to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, we we'll read from verse 21. When these things were accomplished, Paul proposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonian and Achaia to go to Jerusalem saying after I have been there I must also see Rome so he sent into Macedonian two of those who ministered to him Timothy and Erastus but he himself stayed in Asia for a time and about that time, there arose a great commotion about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrine of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of smelling occupation and said men you know that we have our property by this trade moreover you see and hear that not only at Ephesus but throughout almost all Asia this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only in this trade of ours in danger of falling into this report, but also the temple of great goddess Diana may be despaired and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipped. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of Ephesus. So the whole city was filled with confusion, rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gaius and Aristarchus and Macedonian, Paul Traveler Companion. And when Paul wanted to go to the people, the disciples would not allow him. Then some of the officers of Asia, whom were his friends, sent to him, pleading that he would not venture into the theater. This is the word of the Lord. Today we are talking on the topic preach the word preach the word preaching is a mandate preaching is an assignment preaching is a commission preaching is a responsibility laid on each and every one that calls upon the name of the lord the responsibility for preaching was not just given
to pastors, evangelists, missionaries, ministers, but the responsibility of preaching was given to each and every one of us. In Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, the Bible tells us of the mandate, the evangelical mandate that was given. The Bible says we should go ye into the world. We have been empowered to preach, to teach, to baptize, to let the mind of Christ be known to people. When you preach the gospel, all you are simply doing, you are unveiling, you are opening the mind of Christ to believers. You are wetting the ground for the Holy Spirit to take over. You are preparing men for the purpose of the kingdom. Preaching the word of God is a responsibility that has been given to each and everyone. The responsibility of preaching is so that people that have not known Christ, people that have not received the word, the elect that are still in the crowd will be rescued. Heaven, the entire heaven, is depending upon you to be able to preach the word to people so that their lives will experience a turnaround. Where we read, we are told of the responsibility that Paul took for himself. We are told of the missionary journeys that Paul went about from city to city preaching. And then he went into the city of Asia and he was not just traveling alone. He had companions that we are traveling with him so that people will be able to hear the word of God through them. And they kept on preaching the word. And whenever he enters a city and the city has the knowledge of God, he will move to the next city. He came into Macedonia that was a metropolitan city. But his responsibility was not just to settle in the metropolis alone. And that is an area where the gospel is suffering in our time. So many people have limited their gospels to the metropolis. I remember a friend of mine that told me that his calling is to minister to believers in the city. He has no business in the village. So settling in the metropolis and doing metropolis gospel does not end there. So when Paul came to Macedonia that was a metropolis, he knew that there was a city in Ephesus. He knew that there was a place where he needed to go further and to preach the word of God. So he left some of his companions in Macedonia and traveled further to preach the word of God. But when he arrived there, of course, the Holy Spirit took over. And the more he was preaching, the more people were giving their lives to Christ. The more people were abandoning the gods that they were worshipping, the god of Diana of Ephesus that they were worshipping, and the little, little man-made gods that they were worshipping, they were abandoning them. They were throwing them away and following the living God. And this brought trouble upon the preachers. Hear me. That you are preaching the word of God and people are forsaking their evil ways and following you is a battle line that you have drawn. So when Paul was preaching and people were giving their lives to Christ, the battle line was also drawn between himself and the, the silversmith of the lands of Ephesus. Demetrius, the leader of the silversmith, took responsibility to gather people against Paul and his disciples. The idea of gathering people, ganging against the gospel did not start today. The ganging that we are experiencing in our time today, it did not start today. The enemies of the gospel did not start today. They started well before the time of Paul. And even in the time of Paul, they became prominent. And what excuses were they given? The matter of said, well, this man has come, is preaching. People are turning away. From Diana, that is the God of Ephesus that is worshipped by everyone. 
and they are following the God and abandoning their gods that they were making. So this is going a long way to truncate their business. So the reason why he, they were opposing Paul was not necessarily because people were repenting, but it was because people were abandoning the gods that they were making and selling and making good money. So they ganged against them. And the entire city, they, they were able to mobilize the entire city against the apostles and child of God. Their lives were in danger. The lives of children of God, those who preach the gospel, has been subjected to danger each and every passing day. Their life was exposed to danger, but that did not retard them. That did not stop Paul from preaching the word. Rather, it gave Paul more grace to push further to see that people hear the word of the Lord. As many of you that are under the sound of my voice, I don't know that restriction that has risen against you. I don't know that wave of force. For Paul and his companions, it was the entire city that rose against them. And the purpose was to limit them from preaching the word. But Paul looked beyond the limitation. He looked beyond the tribulation. He looked beyond the forces that were rising against them. But rather, he saw it as an opportunity to preach more. The more forces that the enemy is conspiring against you, child of God, it is a reason for you to preach more. I remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when a force was risen against them, against the God that they were worshipping. They saw it as an opportunity to preach to the king. They said, oh king, even if everyone bows, even if you've been able to build a law against the worship of the father, for us we have made our mind because we know we have a God that is capable of saving us. And even if God chooses not to, O oh king, we will not bow. Hear me. The Lord has positioned us at a level where we don't need to be threatened. We don't need to start trembling when the evil wind rises against the gospel. Because when you stand and you challenge this evil wind, you ignite the powers of heaven. They said, O oh king, even if heaven chooses not to respond, we will not bow. Child of God, that tribulation is not enough for you to bow, to give up. It is not enough. That challenge is not enough. That issue, that, that family issue that wants to stop you from preaching the word of God is not strong enough. They said, we will not bow. And when they were thrown into the furnace, that was ignited seven times, it unleashed the presence of heaven in that furnace. Hear me. The Lord wants his presence to be unleashed through your doggedness, through your willingness to preach the word of God, not minding the challenges. Because when you are able to stand the entire forces that are militating against your preaching of the word of God, you release the grace of God. And when the grace of God was re released during the time of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, child of God, the entire city, a decree was made that men will worship the God of heaven. God wants to prove himself through you. I don't know the challenges. Hear me. There are so many challenges that are militating against the preaching of the word of God. But God wants to prove himself through these challenges. Is it the Boko Haram that we're exp experiencing in the Northeast that is bombing churches, killing Christians, kidnapping pastors? A pastor will be on the business of the kingdom, yet this man will just get hold of these people and unleash terror on them. Hear me. All, all these forms of terrorists that you are seeing will come to an end. But the grace of the gospel will keep pushing. And I want to assure you that God will use you to prove himself in the presence of all of these challenges. Is it the headsman crisis that we are experiencing in the middle part of Nigeria? Is it the headsman crisis? That will not retard us. 
even if they are moving house to house on leeching Christians, hear me, it should be an opportunity to preach the word. History has shown that the more terror came upon the church, the more the church waxed stronger and stronger. Is it the kidnapping that we are experiencing in the northeast and the south south? Is it the activities of traditionalists that we are experiencing? All of this has no power to stop us from preaching the word of God. So, child of God, preach the word. Jesus said, preach the word in season. Preach the word out of season. Preach the word when it is convenient. Preach the word when it is not convenient. Preach the word when you are willing. Preach the word when you are not willing. And God will be made manifest in you. I pray that God has allowed you to see today so that you will preach the word. Go in this might and let's conquer the earth for Christ. Father, we worship you. You are a good God. You are a faithful God. You've given us a mandate to preach the word. And by the power of, of the Holy Spirit released upon us, we believe that nothing shall retard us from preaching your word. Not even the COVID-19 pandemic that has overtaken the earth can stop us from preaching your word. But in all of this, your grace will be sufficient upon us. I ask, O oh God, and commit to your children that as they step out today, their today shall be better than yesterday. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. 